Well, I think it's important for people to understand why there are summits like this in the first place. And the reason for that is that there are groups that are very interested in acquiring nuclear material or nuclear weapons so that they can make a nuclear explosive device, which would be like an atom bomb that would go off in a city or someplace. And this would, this would be a great game changer for the global community. It would undermine the global economy, it would undermine global politics and security arrangements. So there are, there are people who want to get this material, and there's a lot of material. 25 countries have fissionable material that could be used for a bomb, and almost every country has highly radioactive sources that could be used for a dirty bomb. Now the summit process, which began in 2010 in Washington, and had a second summit in 2012 in Seoul, and the third summit is here in The Hague in 2014, these summits have addressed these issues, and they've made useful progress. Uh, Twelve fewer countries today have the kind of nu nuclear material that could be used for a weapon than had at the beginning of this process. So that is progress. And I think the Dutch will announce here at this event that more countries have agreed to take certain steps with regard to improving nuclear security. But these are only partial steps. There's still a long way to go to make the world safe from nuclear terrorism. There's going to be a lot of work that needs to be done after the summit. Well, one would hope this, uh, this uh, process will not be indefinite, because once you control nuclear material, and particularly if you reduce it substantially, um, and some countries are reducing their material. The Japanese announced today that they're sending back to the United States, I think, about 300 uh, kilograms of significant weaponized, weaponizable material. That's a positive step. But other countries are producing more of this material. For example, Pakistan is producing more plutonium and enriched uranium. So as long as there's material, uh, there will be a need to make sure there's strong security. You could reach a security arrangements that hopefully will be enduring. So far, the summits have only talked about voluntary measures. We need to move beyond voluntary to legally binding obligations. Is it possible, especially when you have countries like Iran, North Korea, not even participating in this summit? Well, I think it's important to make a start, and the summit has made a start. We need to build on it and grow it, and I'm sure that as countries wish to be seen as good global actors, they will begin to act in very uh, responsible ways in this area. So I think the Nuclear Security Summit process is geared towards creating long-term solutions that will involve everybody. And uh, when we're talking about um, materials for uh, civil use, um, do we have facilities around the world that are not guarded at all, for example? I mean, what is the level of, uh, of actual danger? Well, radiological sources are used for medical purposes, so there are many hospitals. They're used for commercial purposes, so there are many factories and other places. And they're also used in things like uh, research at universities and also in things like oil drilling. So there are millions of these sources in the world. Literally every country has them. Um, and some countries and some institutions within a country are better at securing those materials than others. There are no global standards for nuclear security. There are no global agreed standards for securing either weaponized materials, fissile materials, or radioactive sources. This is something that we hope will be addressed at the next summit. Yes, uh, and I think the Russians have been the object of an attempt by a Chechen group to have a dirty bomb. This was five to eight years ago. It didn't go off, but there was a clear effort to use radiological sources and conventional explosives to produce a dirty bomb. To have every reason to be concerned about it because they've been targeted. And there's a lot of, uh, frankly, probably a lot of material still sloshing around the former Soviet Union that hasn't been accounted for, although much less of it today, but I think there's probably still some. So the Russians have a reason to be involved. I think the rest of the global community has a reason to engage itself, including with the Russians, because this is truly a global problem. It's not something that a handful of countries can solve. Every country has radiological sources, 25 countries have fissile material, and if terrorists transit material to launch an attack someplace, they may go through a country that has none of these materials. But we're all in it together because the consequences, which will be catastrophic, will be borne by everyone. There have been efforts, uh, Al-Qaeda in Iraq actually had a pretty advanced effort in this area to, to develop a weapon and to recruit sources and to acquire material. And there are over a hundred incidents each year 
the IEA keeps track of them, of illicit trafficking or unauthorized possession of nuclear materials. Many times it's radioactive materials, other times it's actually weapons bomb-making material. Uh, as recently as 2010, 2011, there's been fissile material that has been picked up in an illicit transaction. That's good. We like to see the authorities do this. What's troubling, though, is that very often when authorities come across an illicit transaction, the first time any realized the material was missing was after the authorities picked it up. The United States uh, makes a serious effort at securing its materials, although one reads about uh, even uh, nuclear weapons that sometimes get flown to places and nobody realized they were going there. Every country can do better. Our country knows it can do better and is working in that regard. But we need to think about how we deal with this as a global system. As you say, things might come across a border. So what happens in other countries matters to America, and what happens in America should matter to other countries. We're in this together. We need to work together to have good standards. Well, I think it's very important that Iran and the leading uh, powers, the, the six parties, are, are everybody is speaking. Um, it's too early to tell where it's going to come out, but the fact that there is political engagement is important. Uh, I think we all need to realize that, um, that there will be some very difficult issues that have to be decided, that there's a lot of reason to be concerned about Iranian behavior in the past and to make sure that it can't be repeated in the future. I think this is going to be uh, a process that will take some time, uh, but I think that uh, the longer it takes, um, we need to make sure that as it works, uh, even if it does take a long time, that the Iranians live up to what they agreed to uh, and that an uh, agreement that is reached will be verifiable and enforceable.